This was the turning point for me in the series where I just had to say no. Not that I was so gung-ho to give this a high score in the first place, but the manner in which it was portrayed was just a bit too far away from the comedic violence for me to take it as anything less than some serious saw shit here. And in spite of the silliness they tried to inject back into the show, it never really recovered for me. I draw the line at semi-realistic chainsaw violence. Go figure. This show is like Rosario plus Vampire's mean-spirited cousin because everything in it is really like a foul-tempered spin on the supernatural girlfriend genre. What other many sins does this show commit? Well, for starters, the vampire ninja keeps shouting swallow return strike on things that are clearly not a swallow return strike. They literally run out of plot by the 12th episode, and the final episode breaks down into a swimsuit singing competition. I'd say you had to see it to believe it, but let's face it, you don't need to see it. Apparently, the more powerful you are as a magical garment girl, the cuter your outfit, and... By God, that's nauseatingly cute. Oh, didn't I mention that there was some cross-dressing involved? Yeah, not only is I a loser, but then he gets covered with pink and petticoats as a bonus. Oh, and as an added bonus, you get to see a girl who's flat as a board, naked every time she tries to transform. I'm beginning to think the people who complain that anime is nothing but blood and nudity might be onto something. Yeah, I'm beginning to pine for the mid-90s. Oh, crap. Should I call an ambulance? We need 20 episodes of Ray Earth, stat! Back to Rosario plus Vampire. The whole show is a real sleepwalk. The crux of the issues in these episodes are mostly, I don't belong because I'm a monster girl. Which is kind of stupid because they're at the school for monsters, because they are monsters, and need to be with other monsters. Now I know I might seem like I'm stretching a bit, but why is it that it takes them a human male to guide them into proper ways of being and to stop being so predatory? But then I suppose no one would ever accuse Japan of being the most progressive in gender roles. So yes, these girls fall stupidly, desperately in love with Skune. Why? Because he was nice to them once, or because he tastes good, or some shit. I understand that it's not exactly supposed to be a realistic interpretation of how relationships work, but this is just reinforcing that weird nice guy stereotype. You know the one I'm talking about, the sort of loser who uses friend zone unironically. By the way, if you haven't heard it from most people on the web about how stupid the idea of the friend zone is, well, then I'll give it to you. If you believe in the friend zone, you're a tit, and you probably don't deserve the friendship of the women you're trying desperately to trick into fucking you. But if you're a well-adjusted, sensible human being, forget I said anything. So can you tell me one thing that this show does differently than any dumb hair I... Oh boy, is that guy being crucified? Well, that's new. Care to weigh in? <laughs> Alright, um, history lesson time... So let me put forward that when the Christians were kicked out of Japan in the 1600s, one of the biggest things that Christianity left behind was that crucifixion was a very nasty way to get killed. And it certainly hasn't gotten any more pleasant since then. And while there's not a history of imagery associated with crosses over there, there most certainly is one in the States. And being a mostly homogenous society over there, it's easy for them to forget that racial violence is still quite fresh in the minds of most Americans. But you may be thinking to yourself, gee, Prof, it's not exactly like they make this stuff with Americans in mind. Well, no, but that's where this little thing called context kicks in. Context is the way you see the world and shapes how you react to stimuli, particularly media. If, for example, you were someone who lives in the Midwestern United States, particularly a state that has been known to be a hotbed of racial violence, you may see things like a giant cross and fantasy racism as two things you'd rather not see go together. Add in the fact that most of the student body in this particular scene are screaming for his blood, and it just gets a little bit too real here. Oh shit, did I hit the serious button again? Let's just flip the stupid switch back on. Derp! So taking all this into consideration, between the characters and the dark twists and turns that are both pretty unsavory, they're roughly the same. A prophet checklist, please. So, in short order, we've got the girl who has locked down superpowers like Mocha, the troublemaker who looks like she's ten, the one with the giant jubblies who ends up harming the main character, and the average but clingy one. The show's featured the usual screwball comedy, a fairly decent budget to play with, and dubs that don't hurt my ears, but don't blow minds. And then right in the middle of things, they get pointlessly dark and violent out of left field. On top of all that, both shows have second seasons that I don't care to bother with. In all seriousness, though, when I say these types of shows are formulaic, and I can have them rattled off down to a T, we got problems. These types of shows have all the same problems, and it's all tied into how formulaic they are. Because 
for all the good they might try to do with the show itself, the formula they're following is still kind of crap. You can add a different flavor to cookies, but if the recipe calls for horse snot and stale Cheez-Its, you're still going to have cookies that look like a biohazard. Mind rolling that one back a bit? I think you lost the cheap seats. What I'm getting at is, no matter how you dress these shows up, no matter how good or bad the animation is, no matter how good the dub cast may be, or how funny the comedic bits are, you're still sitting on what amounts to the same show. But then I guess if the folks over there can stand to watch the same minute and a half of Common Rider transforming and finishing off the bad guy, week in and week out, it's not all that shocking. I think at the end of the day, I find being safe far more offensive than anything else a show can do. If a show has a crappy dub or a really badly executed premise, then it could be a whole hell of a lot worse. But when it's just safe and breaks no ground and does nothing new for the genre, it's just a waste of celluloid. Or data since it's all digital now. Not that every show must innovate, no, no, but there are ways that you can take the same well-tread premise and spin it differently. Korewa Zombie Deska and Rosario plus Vampire do neither of these. They are utterly disposable, due to be forgotten by the time next year's iteration of Magical Girlfriend Harem Show pops up. You know, I watched both of these shows on recommendations from my friends, and I've come to the conclusion that I should probably stop listening to them. Now, what I really need is something that'll... Ugh, something that'll really cleanse my palate. And I think what I've got is... Yeah, I think this will do nicely. Right. 